This episode of Raise the Bar is dedicated to your sanctuary. Domestic abuse is everybody's business. In any given year, 20% of employed women experience domestic abuse and it costs approximately £2 billion to UK businesses through lost productivity, lost wages and sick pay. Each week, at least two women are murdered by their partner or ex-partner. You could make an enormous difference to victims of domestic abuse by implementing some very simple changes to the workplace. For example, make sure you have a domestic abuse policy, ensure your managers are trained and build a relationship with a specialist DA charity. For more information and support with this issue, take a look at the Your Sanctuary website on www.yoursanctuary.org.uk. Thank you. I think the first thing to do is have a look at maternity allowance. And probably when you look at it, it might scare you and you think, oh my goodness. Um, so the maximum you could receive on maternity allowance is £151.20 a week. And that's for a limited period oh. of time. I know it's very scary. But I think once you have a good understanding of what's available from the government, you can start to work backwards in a sense. So I actually have a spreadsheet on my website, which I design and kind of plugged in myself um, and there's two spreadsheets so one allows you to put in your typical sources of income your typical expenditures how much you may potentially be putting into savings every single month and, and you can look at your normal budget in that way and then have another spreadsheet and it's called how much does it cost to have a baby and I've ranked it right from essentials all the way through to the luxuries that you definitely don't need. So again, you can start to really benchmark, okay, right, if we're looking at just the essentials roughly for a year, how much would it cost us? Hello, and welcome to Raise the Bar. I'm Frankie Cotton, and this is the weekly podcast that explores business work and money through honest conversations with women on a mission. My guest this week is Toby Asare, founder of My Bump Pay, an online platform and community that helps women to overcome the motherhood penalty, navigate maternity leave, and achieve their career goals whilst growing their family. In this episode, I asked Toby some of the big questions about what it's really like to have a baby and manage a career, particularly if you're self-employed or run your own business. Toby tells us how to prepare financially and practically with some great tips on staying visible whilst on maternity leave. We also discuss how women's economic progress has been reversed as a result of the pandemic, with data from the organisation Pregnant Then Screwed finding that 72% of mothers have had to work fewer hours because of childcare issues. So, if you have a baby on the way or are thinking about starting a family, then this episode is for you. This conversation was recorded on the 9th of February 2021. I hope you enjoy listening. If you have a view on anything mentioned in the podcast and would like to share it, you can send an email to podcast at raise the dot bar, or you can join in the conversation online using the hashtag raise the bar and tagging us at raise HQ underscore on social media. And lastly, if you're enjoying this podcast series, please leave a rating and review on Apple podcasts. It helps us to be more visible, which ultimately means we can bring you more interviews with brilliant women. Thank you. Toby, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Very excited to speak with you today. Me too. And and Toby, I wonder if you could start by telling us about My Bump Pay. What, what inspired you to start it? Absolutely. So My Bump Pay is a platform for women designed to help them smash the glass ceiling with the baby on the way and beyond, really giving them the confidence and the tools to win in the workplace and in life. And very much inspired by my own journey from being the first person in my office location to go on maternity leave. So it was almost as if I was kind of discovering an on this journey pretty much by myself and trying to understand, okay, what are the best things that I can kind of implement to make sure that I have a successful career, not only whilst I'm pregnant, but after when, you know, the important baby arrives, how do I kind of manage to still go for my goals, uh, but also be a very present and engaged mum as well. And so I just became absolutely fascinated and obsessed with understanding how are women doing it. And I think we hear a lot of negative news stories and those are all very true and all very valid. And on my journey, I found, well, there's lots of information, but how amazing would it be to have all of this information in one place in a format that, that is accessible, that is fun, that is engaging. So really it was kind of inspired by my journey to want to to know more, to learn more, and the questions that my friends and people in my community who are also on this journey kind of had around me at the same time. And 
can I ask how long ago that was when when you were in that job and you were the first because that's that's a big one right you know being the first in that office to to go on maternity leave and go through that process did you feel the heat yes I do I do remember kind of the <laughs> a couple of colleagues when they you know understood that knew that I was pregnant kind of pulling me to the side and like so how did you have the conversation you know what does maternity pay look like um and you know they're probably you know years away from having children but as women I think naturally inquisitively those things kind of play on our our mind whether we're thinking about having children tomorrow or kind of 10 years down the line so I think in respect of kind of those I guess offline conversations that you have then yes there definitely was pressure in that in that sense so this was back in 2000 and goodness 2017 I would have shared the news about my my pregnancy so kind of going back almost four years ago wow um I've since had another child then since that time as well so that's been a very interesting experience to kind of go through it twice yeah and and my understanding is did you have your second also during the pandemic well I mean I guess you've definitely got both of them now and you've been been through a year like like everyone I suppose um how how's that been tell us about that yeah so I had my second child towards the end of 2019 so I guess when the pandemic was lurking and shores further afield we thought and yes so kind of we went into lockdown when my youngest was a few months old and that was I was speaking to another mum yesterday and saying we we still have PTSD from you know just kind of juggling everything you know the mental load the emotional load also figuring out how do I look after you know relatively small baby and all of a sudden this very energetic toddler with no garden in London um and everything else that comes with you know what the pandemic had thrown at us Mm. at the time and also kind of doing maternity leave and not having the maternity leave that we all kind of hoped for and expected and kind of being cut off from your support systems as well so it definitely was a journey and a half um but I'm very grateful for that time because I think it birthed something very special in my bump pay and what what are the names of your two children so we have Joshua who is three and Grace who is one Oh, bless. And what are the most common questions that that typically women come to you with when thinking about balancing a baby and their career? Mm, Really good question. So lots of women come to me early on, even maybe even before they started that journey to conception of saying, you know, I really want a family. Something within me is telling me I should have a family. And there are various different factors that play into that. But Toby, I'm really scared about taking time out of my career. I've worked really hard to get to where I am and I really don't want to take that time out. Or financially, can I even afford to take that time out? Can I even afford to have a baby? Um, Or sometimes it's very interesting. I'm getting more and more women saying, I'm the breadwinner from you know the relationship so how does that work if I take time out of mm. you know the the workforce so that's another that's a really big issue is that fear of taking the time out that fear of missing out in your career journey or, or achieving your goals so to speak um, there's a confidence piece as well in terms of I've just taken time out I don't feel as capable as I was before which I think is absolute nonsense but you know, it, it is very kind of true in terms of that's how a lot of women feel in terms of taking time out to have to raise children. Um, there's finances, as we've kind of spoken to about before, in relation to maybe maybe needing more space, maternity pay, maternity allowance, whatever it is that you know you're eligible for. Those are kind of really big concerns. It's definitely finances, and then there's job security as well in terms of again, you know, I'm taking time out. How how safe is mm-hmm. my how safe is my job? And there's an element of fear of discrimination there because we know the statistics are very real where you know that it's been proven to to say that you know up to 54,000 women potentially even more a year at risk of kind of losing their jobs or being discriminated against because they are pregnant or or having a child so um yeah those concerns are very very real and very Mm -hmm. valid and I listen to them every single day Mm, that's interesting what you say about about breadwinning because in a way that's a real sort of great sign of women's economic progress is is that women are the breadwinners but then you've got it's, it becomes a double-edged sword right you've got the pressure then of 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 how do you maintain that and maintain what the you know what you're bringing into the family and the level of income and also you know the fear of okay well even if I take some time out on maternity leave will my position still be there as you're saying I mean what what do you 
what do you say to women who come to you with those concerns? What, how should we be feeling or, or maybe trying to reframe it? Absolutely. So I think maternity leave is a great opportunity to kind of repossession the things that you really want for your life. And actually, there's this whole narrative around, you know, women or mothers that kind of go off to raise a family are maybe less committed. And I have not found that to be true in any way, shape or form. If anything, we're more committed, more driven, because there's extra weight and extra responsibility now on our shoulders. So I actually think it's a brilliant opportunity for women to reframe what is really important to them and get really clear on those goals and I think once you get really clear on those goals those goals could be financial goals those goals could be you know career progression those goals could be actually I want x amount of time on my career and x amount of time with my family once you get really clear on those goals I think be very strategic about how you plan your time up until maybe either conception or maternity leave and um, I'm a very big believer in preparing for your return to work even way before you go on maternity leave, what are the things that you can kind of put in place to really help edify your journey before you even fall pregnant potentially, or before you even go on maternity leave? So there could be things, you know, if we're talking about the workplace, for example, that could be something like getting a sponsor or nurturing a relationship with an individual that will sponsor you. Because I'm a big believer in you need to advocate for yourself. You need to make sure that the key people mm-hmm. around you or within your organization, within your business or with your clients if you're self-employed really understand the value that you bring to the table and the difficulty with maternity leave is that sometimes sadly it's out of sight out of mind Mm -hmm. but if you have somebody who's able to advocate for you in the form of a sponsor around that decision making table somebody can say oh for example you know toby's on maternity leave but i know she's brilliant at, at these one two three things and if we're thinking about new opportunities she would be fantastic when she's returning in one month's time to take on that new opportunity so i'm a big believer of kind of being very strategic about the clarity of what you want and putting a bit of a strategic plan into place as to how you can still achieve those goals irrespective of growing a family yeah and I can see how that could be incredibly valuable and and having that prep time and really thinking about it beforehand is is definitely wise um so Toby I'd like to ask you a bit about my personal situation and I feel like this <laughs> maybe is oversharing but many people within our audience are self-employed they work freelance or even run their own business so I'm 31 years old, and I think that's actually the first time I've said that out loud, having turned 31 uh, during lockdown. Um, But anyway, 31, married. Um, I live in a very small house in London. So I run my own startup business. um, So I'm working probably somewhere between 50 to 60 hours a week. And my husband also runs his own business. Um, It's maybe a, a year or so older than mine, and he has a similar workload. And to be honest, probably for about five years, actually, having a family has been in the back of my mind. It's it's always there. And I think as a woman, you know, once you get into your late 20s, early 30s, you know, it's unavoidable. It's one of those things that just takes up space in your head if, if that's what you're thinking about that, that you might, might like. Where would I even start? Help me. <laughs> so how, as a self-employed couple, uh, how can we start really thinking financially and practically about how we could perhaps have a family? Sure. I think the first thing to do is have a look at maternity allowance. And probably when you you look at it, it might scare you and you think, oh, my goodness. Um, So the maximum you could receive on maternity allowance is £151.20 a week. And that's for a limited period of time. I know it's very scary. But I think once you have a good understanding of what's available from the government, you can start to work backwards in a sense so I actually have a spreadsheet on my website which I designed and kind of plugged in myself um, and there's two spreadsheets so one allows you to put in your typical sources of income your typical expenditures how much you may potentially be putting into savings every single month and, and you can look at your normal budget in that way and then what you could do is you could then extrapolate those figures and then compare it to what you may um use or spend on maternity leave so you could put in a maternity allowance only for example or you could put in how much you felt that you needed to survive whilst Mm -hmm. on maternity Mm -hmm. leave Um, and that will kind of give you a figure as to roughly how long potentially you could take financially on maternity leave I then have another spreadsheet and it's called how much does it cost to have a baby and I've ranked it right from essentials 
all the way through to the luxuries that you definitely don't need. So again, you can start to really benchmark, okay, right, if we're looking at just the essentials roughly for a year or for a couple of months, how much would it cost us essentially? So I say start to work backwards um, and then think about, okay, could you every month now start chipping away a little bit at savings to kind of put into a pot? I'm a big fan of bank accounts like Starling because you can very clearly categorize your savings and you can maybe label it future baby, for example, and you can maybe start to chip away and put money into, into that pot. So I think there's loads of great tools out there. Um, and quite interestingly, there's a little business that I love because I'm fascinated with startup businesses as well, especially ones run by women. Um, but there's a business that I love called Sprout Perks. And the whole concept is if you get maternity, um, if you get student discounts, sorry, when you are a student, why don't you get maternity discount when you're on maternity leave? Which is a great question. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's open to mothers and fathers. Anyone can join. I think there's a small fee for a year or 18 months. And then there's a, a wide range of brand partners where you can get discounts um, from as well. So that could help you kind of further further down the line but I think it's about getting really clear as to how much are we potentially going to to need um, also making sure that you're paying the right national insurance contributions which are class two contributions to make sure that you have uh, eligibility for maternity allowance as well but I think if you look at the maternity allowance figure it will scare you it's not it's not as scary as it seems my husband's also self-employed and it's it's doable um it's definitely doable although it seems like a mammoth task Mm, yeah and you what you were just saying there Toby about um how much does it really cost to have a baby I was imagining you get an enormous amount of search traffic (laughs) come through to your website on that one um but I mean what does it really cost like you say that there's sort of a, a baseline right and sort of the bare essentials what 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 are we looking at realistically in in the first year so if we're looking at kind of all the the stuff so to speak the essentials I've worked out to be kind of around 1500 plus however when I say that I think you can even whittle that down even further so for example um the crib that I've used for all of my children I have not spent more than 30 pounds I've bought a mattress and very kindly between a group of friends we've all shared the same crib you can take down the size it's washable so those are things for example we all have used the same bouncer but we all have our own cover I bought mine on eBay for example so there really are things that you can really slash the cost down dramatically not everything needs to be brand new I think the biggest cost or biggest reoccurring cost you'll probably find are things like nappies and there are some great brands out there that cost a fraction of the price of pampers for example so you really can get really clever about where to slash costs I think the biggest costs come in when we start talking about childcare that's where it gets sadly expensive well that's it and and really as well you know that's that comes into to to time and being realistic about our time I mean is it reasonable for for someone like you or I, you know, um, working full time or self employed, to really expect to be able to return to that full time employment, um, even with childcare? I mean, as somebody who doesn't have children, it sounds like like it could work, but realistically, is does it work? It's very hard. I think you literally do have to do the sums for you and your family to understand what works best. So for some families, it is returning back to work part-time, maybe one of the parents returning back to work part-time because actually what they are saving on childcare is more than what they would earn for the additional day or two days of income for some families. Um, And then for some families, actually it may pay to work that full-time and then pay that full-time childcare or potentially if you're lucky lucky enough to have family help that is the absolute you know I guess the the dream (laughs) the dream exactly um so I think for every family it is it's it's a very personal decision I think from Mm. my experience I have almost preferred working a full week because I think for so many of us our jobs are really intense and sometimes if you're trying to cram a full-time job into four days a week or three days a week you end up working pro bono which I'm not Mm. an advocate of women doing whatsoever Um, so I think you have to very much look at your career 
And if you are maybe going to reduce your hours or kind of work part time, you have to think about, okay, what is what is reasonable and what is fair and what is, um, yeah, what's reasonable and what is fair for you to do within those slightly shorter hours. And I do definitely advocate to make sure that you're not working pro bono. But I guess to answer your question in short, I do definitely feel that it's possible to work full time roles. You just need to make sure that you have the right structures around you as a family in terms of support to enable you to do that and toby what's been your personal experience so so when we opened this conversation you were telling us about um you know the the role you were in and and being the first to go on maternity leave what have the last four years or so brought you because clearly i mean you're running um my bump pay so you've set up your own platform what's what's been the um the i don't like using the word but i'll use it what's been the journey the journey has been many ups and downs, um, to, to be honest. My first return back to work was a real learning experience. I learned truly what I, what I wanted. I learned where the pitfalls are for women, maybe like myself or different women in, in different situations in terms of the return to work and just how much of an impact having the right support structures within the workplace and outside of the workplace can make to a successful return to work. Um, I saw friends and colleagues, some of them really thrive in, in their return and really progress in advance. Um, and I saw some people really, really struggle. And I think from my experience, there, there are moments where I, I felt like I was thriving and I really had this. And there were moments where I definitely did struggle. Um, I think also kind of being that first to return to an environment where they never really had somebody return in that way. Um, mm. And also being in a business that moves very 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 quickly so I think that's that was quite difficult for me in terms of stepping back into I guess an organization that had changed a lot actually whilst I had been on mm. maternity leave and management structures had changed as well and kind of being somebody who was quite senior in that organization as well trying to find my way around it and trying to find my feet in that return was was definitely difficult so I learned a lot of things that I could have done better um, and those are some of the things that I kind of preach about and I learned about the things that actually went well and I think you know hopefully lots of women can hopefully um, take advantage of as well. And with my bump pay wh- when did you launch it was it in between your first and your second or, or was it more recently than that? So I launched it in 2018. So officially it was October of 2018 when I had um, just returned after my first child. So I'd had the idea for a very long time and the idea had, had, has evolved since its first um, inception. So I had the idea and I started working on it over the summer. I don't know why I do this to myself. I start working on these ideas during maternity leave, which is not always the best time to do these things, but that's where the inspiration kind of really hit me as to, right, I'm going to do this now. So I started started working on it in the summer launched in October 2018 really just kind of played around with the concept a little bit and then in between that time um fell pregnant with my second daughter and in all honesty things kind of got put to the side because I was struggling to to juggle it all Um, I'm not surprised (laughs) it's a lot (laughs) yeah exactly and then like I say kind of the, the pandemic brought to me something very special which was this kind of refocus on my on my bump pay because just from listening to the community in terms of what they were struggling with um I saw that there was a real opportunity to to help which I absolutely love 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 doing so it's kind of taken that format of being a platform hopefully which is filled with advice and opportunities through our masterclasses to help kind of women in a more kind of personal setting and kind of walk walk them through these journeys if they're thinking about having a baby or returning to work. And how have those past few years been? How how has it been growing growing the business and growing the brand? How have you found it? So the first year was a real hard slog in terms of just trying to play around with what you know what do women really want? Um, who were going on this journey, what's helpful for them. I don't, I don't really think I had a really clear idea, but I was just playing with different concepts, different types of content, um, different types of speaking engagements, just to see what was really clicking. So that was quite a, a journey. And then obviously, I, as I mentioned, I kind of had my, had my daughter. And at one point during lockdown, I was thinking, do you know, there's just no point in pursuing this anymore because I've just got too much going on and I just don't really know what to do with it. And I'm really lucky that I have some amazing friends. And one of them spoke to me quite honestly and was like, no, you just need to refocus because I think the answer's there somewhere. 
And so she, she was right. I spent a lot of time kind of thinking about it and starting to actually look into my stats and what the community was actually saying, started to unpack that actually they just want help. They just want a bit of a community and they want a safe space to say, this is really hard at work. Mm. Um, how do I navigate through this? And am I alone for thinking in this way? No, absolutely not. You know, here are X many women who are also dealing with the same thing. Let's kind of set up a very structured class program where we can kind of help and walk through some of the common issues that, that women face. And for me, I've loved it. It's been brilliant. It's really kind of given me a real insight into, I guess, the amount of talent that we actually have in Ooh. women. Um, not just that. women who are mothers amazing and what does the the vision look like what do you think the future looks like and and what are some of the challenges that you want my bump pay to address yeah absolutely so the future I would love for this to be almost like the one stop place or the hub for everything in relation to the working mother and I say the working mother in the sense I actually don't really like that term because I think every mother is a working mother irrespective of where you kind of place your your label or your skills um, but I guess it's the term that kind of best encapsulates um, the target audience but ultimately kind of being that one-stop hub for them in terms of everything from the working world to home life um, and to things that you're really passionate about because I think a lot of these women that I kind of engage with on a daily basis are really passionate about work but they're also really passionate about things outside of work and how can we nurture them to be able to have the capacity to do both because I think when women really tap into what they're passionate about in and outside of the workplace you really do get the best out of them so I would love for it to evolve into a platform that can help and serve women in, in more than one way and that could be kind of engaging directly with women themselves or through different partnerships or through different businesses so really early days but I'm very excited about where it could go amazing and then if we just hop back to now I mean it's widely accepted that women's economic progress has unfortunately been reversed as a result of the pandemic and although we don't have the full data picture yet um, I mean anecdotally we know that women have been picking up a lot of the additional care duties and there has been a survey um, of 20,000 working mums carried out by Pregnant Then Screwed and what they found was that 72% of mothers have had to work fewer hours because of childcare issues and 65% of mothers who have been furloughed say that a lack of childcare was the reason. Um, And obviously you you have a a strong link to to this community and I wonder what advice do you have for for working parents and particularly working mums right now that are being impacted in this way? It's a really tough time and Jolie's done fantastic work with that survey. Jolie, you're pregnant and screwed. My advice would be, if you can, if possible, I know everyone's situation is very different, but if you can, have a really strong and honest conversation with your support network, whatever your support network looks like. If that's a partner, have a really honest conversation with your partner and saying, this is my career this is where I want it to get to. This is where I want what I want it to look like. This is where it is right now. What are the options so that we can sustain my career and sustain my income and and then and the long term picture alongside these childcare responsibilities that that we both have. Um, if that is <laughs> an important option. word, yes, yeah, both. <laughs> both have exactly. Yeah. Um, I think there is, and I see it day in day out. I think there's an automatic assumption, and I think maybe it's the caring nature or nurture within us that as soon as there's a family crisis we're the first ones to say no problem I'll step in yeah I'll pick up the slack um and I think we I would really encourage women to kind of reverse that automatic assumption and saying before you nominate yourself automatically have a conversation with your partner if that is that is a possibility or your support network so sometimes that may even be grandparents or uncles or aunties or in-laws have that conversation with your support network and say right can we figure out three options potentially here and if the option is that yes you carry that burden then at least I feel more comfortable that women have considered all options rather than just automatically kind of availing themselves as as the savior here so that's the first thing I would say is have a conversation with your support network secondly have a conversation with your 
employer. Um, I think get to the nitty gritty of your role and what is really important in your role. How can you, within the hours that you've got, given kind of childcare responsibilities, how can you still meet those business requirements mm-hmm. and kind of work backwards from there? Again, not having that automatic assumption of, right, I've got childcare now, I can't, I can't do it all. It's very likely that you can't do it all, but actually can you then maybe tweak your your role a little bit so that you're focusing on your core activities that really add value to the business and perhaps maybe devolving or delegating the additional activities that make you look busy but aren't necessarily Mm -hmm. bring Mm -hmm. adding value um, to the business and then I'd also say largely largely sorry thirdly I say don't do it alone I know so many of us feel like we have to kind of keep our struggles to ourselves and kind of prevent present this very brave face of I'm I'm just about doing it you know I'm spinning all these plates but I think from talking to parents and that's what I love about my bump pay is that the more we get talking the more we appreciate all the more we understand maybe how people are doing it it may not work for you but you may discover something that you haven't mm-hmm. tried or at least you might walk away with that feeling of knowing I'm not alone everyone's in this disgustingly horrible boat um together so I do say kind of talking to other parents is is really really powerful as well and do you think that it I mean I was just thinking as you were chatting just then is perhaps for for some dads who maybe haven't been that hands-on haven't necessarily been around the family so much you know the the child care responsibilities usually fall onto onto mum for example do you think there's actually a real um, perhaps something something great happening there where some dads are actually becoming more involved in families and actually maybe appreciating a bit more about what it really takes to take on those additional care responsibilities which typically do fall to, to mum or, or to the women in the family. 100% I think there's a great awakening of fathers realising what it takes to really kind of you know raise a family and kind of be there for your children and that's not to say that a lot of fathers don't necessarily want to be there for their children I don't think that's true I think a lot of them do but I think just because of the way society is traditionally kind of set up as we've mentioned a lot of women are kind of doing the bulk of the of the child rearing I think that needs to go deeper because I think in reality what happens is sometimes a lot of men you, you just look at the core finances right so if you're a man and you're earning x amount of money and you need to keep you need to provide and put family food on the table for your family you're going to keep pushing on with your career because that's what provides and that's what puts food on the table so I think if we're kind of going really deeper and looking at the things that are systemic that need to change it needs to be things around kind of improving shared parental leave improving the gender pay gap all of those things will actually make it a reality for men to step in and be more proactive and more present and therefore hopefully lightening the the load off women and that hopefully allows them to thrive in either running their own businesses or in the workplace as well yeah and I guess that'll be really interesting to see you know as as we all do start to return to our workplaces and is to see how the effects of 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 this has how how that does impact what, what work looks like when we do go back and and how maybe our employers our managers and business leaders you know if they have a different view if things can be done differently and I'm sure that they can or if we'll revert back because the, that's the other thing about you know being in a recession and this sort of recovery is is then you get that sort of panic and that real focus on on productivity etc and, and there could be a revert back I guess there, there'll be a mixture of the two and and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out I'm fascinated to see what this sort of this mass return to work is going to look like over over the course of this year it's going to be super interesting yeah I, I couldn't agree more that I think you very clearly we're going to see two camps again we're going to see some companies and I'm already seeing it we're going to see some companies start to change and embrace change and we're going to see some companies who are say no kind of right back to the old way um so yes I definitely agree with you there and Toby I I'd love to ask you a bit more actually in in terms of government policy if if you have a view on that so of course there is the issue of discrimination against women in the self-employment income support scheme SEISS um, as maternity leave is not exempt in the earnings calculations which essentially means that maternity leave is being treated the same as as going on holiday or taking a sabbatical and I just wonder do do you have a view on as to how the government policy is perhaps holding back women's equality and and maybe what we should be lobbying for or or really asking from our from our MPs and our representatives um you know over the coming months absolutely I do 
Gosh, I don't understand. I, I struggle to get my head around maternity leave being treated as you know, a holiday <laughs> or sabbatical. It is far from it. Um, and so I think if you're kind of looking at things even around kind of payments for women when they do take a, a break to, to raise a family, even looking at maternity allowance on average, it's way less than what a, a woman who is employed by an organization would get. So I'd love to see that amount of money being available for women who do take maternity allowance being increased. Um, I'd also love to see kind of things around, as I mentioned, kind of paternity leave and access to shared parental leave be improved because where you have couples where potentially maybe the the, the man is employed um, if they do have access to a great scheme then obviously you know they can take more time mm-hmm. as well with the children the so mind. again it's not just on it's not just on the mother to kind of share that load as well and I think more gosh I mean we we need businesses right now we need the small businesses we need we need these women to be in a position where they feel like they can generate and contribute to the economy so we really do need incentives for for women to kind of go into business remain in business and thrive in business and not just for not just for men so I think there are so many different angles of which we we could attack this from but absolutely I think we definitely need to need to see a change across the board mm, yeah and and keep that pressure on the government um <laughs> definitely because it is absolutely outrageous it is outrageous that maternity leave is being treated like like just taking a taking some time off and taking a holiday. Um, yeah, I can't believe it. Um, so, Toby, thank you so much for for everything that you've that you've shared with us today. Uh, I'd just love to give you the opportunity. Is there anything that perhaps we've not touched on that you'd love to share with the listeners or that you'd like to to talk about? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a really really wonderful conversation. I would. I'd love to say so many things, but I think I'd love to say kind of the most that maternity leave doesn't mean that your careers or your dreams are over by any means. I think if you allow yourself, you will find you'll get more clarity and more purpose and more sense of direction than ever before. Um, So I, you know, would really encourage women if they're thinking about starting a family, obviously take all of you know, the important things into consideration, but also know that it can be an incredibly empowering, hard, but incredibly empowering (laughs) process. Um, And yeah, I'd love to see anyone who's interested in my bunk pay to, you know, take a look. Um, Very present on Instagram. We have a website um, as well, which is just mybunkpay.com. And my you know, inbox is always open for uh, questions and conversations. Yes, and I do recommend that everybody goes and watches your IGTVs because they're like a nice warm hug. That's how I felt when I was <laughs> watching you. them. Um, I was just sort of getting all wrapped up in it. And yeah, it was it was really reassuring. And I think that's exactly what, um, you know, any new mom or somebody considering having a family needs, uh, especially right now. So thank you so much, Toby. I've, it's been a pleasure. I've really enjoyed chatting with you today. Thank you so much for having me on. Thanks for listening to Raise the Bar. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review us on your favourite podcast app and spread the word. You can join in the conversation online using the hashtag Raise the Bar and tagging us at raisehq underscore on social media. And you can find all the details about our brilliant guests in the show notes. See you next week.